Okay, uh, we are live, got the audio and the video up and running, got the slides up, so welcome to Statics. We are rocking and rolling. We are in lecture 18. Um, still trucking along with our homework schedule, so uh, we've graded homework 3.4. Homework 3.5 uh, is due today, and then homework 3.6 is assigned due Wednesday. Um, today's kind of important because... Um, Really, you know, what we've been doing with, with forces and moments has really sort of been all pointing to kind of this lecture, or maybe more generally the lecture today and the lecture Wednesday. Because up until now, uh, what we've been working on is trying to understand what a moment is. Um, and the, the, the thing about a moment is, you know, you know we talk about how a, a moment uh, is a force times a distance and, and all of this. Um, what we did on um, what we did on Friday was we, we started to to broach the idea of starting to simplify a system. So you know we had a bunch of forces all applied on a given system, and then we reduced it to a single vector. That in the end all we had is a single moment vector. Um, and more generally, that task is really where this chapter in the book and where this this uh, part in this course is all pointing towards is this idea of an equivalent system of forces. So you know. We'll, this is true in mechanics is that we deal with a system subjected to a lot of forces. You know, we have beams with, you know, point loads and distributed loads. And this is going to be become uh, become clear, you know, uh, maybe sometime later this week and in the beginning of next. You know, we have trusses, we have frames, we have machines, we have all these systems with all these different forces. And a lot of times what that is, is it, there's a lot of stuff to deal with. We take this and um, idealize it as a system with a smaller, more manageable number of forces. Now, force couples was kind of a special case with that because with a force couple, you have two forces that are equal and opposite directions. So if you sum those forces, you're going to get zero. Um, and so really, you can replace a force couple with just a single moment vector. And that was kind of what we were talking about on Friday. Today, what we're going to do is take that a little bit more generally. Um, so what we're going to do is, you know, we're going to have a system and it's going to be subjected to all sorts of loads. We're going to sum the respective components of all of the forces and moments to reduce the amount of stuff that we've got to deal with. Now, here, here's something that's, that's kind of important, okay? What we're going to be doing today and Wednesday is we're going to be looking at equivalent system of forces, but we're not looking at equilibrium yet. Okay, and there's a difference. Okay, so what I mean by an equivalent system of forces is if I have two systems, like system one and system two, I propose that those systems are equivalent. If we have the same sum of forces uh, in one uh, uh, system than we do in another, as well as the moments. Okay, now that's what I mean by equivalent systems. Equilibrium is when the sum of forces in that system is zero, or the sum of moments in that system is zero. So today, all our goal is to do is to take this system of forces and just reduce it to a smaller, more manageable system. In our next chapter, when we start talking about rigid body equilibrium, what we're going to be trying to determine are what are called reactions. Okay, and so what I mean by a reaction is you've got this system and it's subjected to all sorts of forces. What are those unknown reaction forces that have to counteract what you're putting on the system to maintain equilibrium? So the point I'm making is Right now, we're not doing sum of forces equals zero or sum of moments equals zero. So for right now, don't set those sums equal to zero. We're going to do that later. Right now, we're just going to take those components and sum them up to reduce the amount of forces to something that's a little bit more manageable. All right. And I think that the easiest way to illustrate what I'm talking about here is to just get into it. Let's not, you know, because... I think at this point, we've defined everything that there is to define. We've defined what moments are. We know how to do cross products. We know how to deal with couples. We, I mean, we've handled all these components. Let's just start using them. So I have a problem uh, out of the textbook that I think is a really good exercise for, for what's going on. So I have four tugboats that, that are they're, they're, they're trying to push this barge to, uh, to dock, if you will, or to its pier. And they're each exerting a 5,000 pound force on the, the, the larger ship. So we got a boat one, a boat two, a boat three, and a boat four. Um, and what we want to do is we want to determine an equivalent force couple system. And so what that means is that we're going to try and resolve this into essentially two vectors. 
a single force vector and a single moment vector. And so we have four vectors, four loads applied to this system. You're going to see how this process would work if we had 400 loads uh, applied to this system. We would still be able to take this you know, bunch of loads and idealize it as a single force vector and a single moment vector. And so that's going to be my goal is to try and, uh, and handle th that part. And then the second part, this is a little bit more uh, uh, nuanced, but the idea is if I have a single more powerful tugboat, where should it push uh, on the cruise ship in order to produce the same uh, force effects? And so that, uh, that's really sort of the point of the problem, but you're going to see how this problem, we're going to use all of the tools that we've developed up until this point, and it's going to be a very systematic process uh, to handle this. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to do two dimensions, and then Wednesday, we'll handle three dimensions. So everybody good before we, uh, before we just jump right into this? All right. Okay. So I'm going to stop the share and pull up the notebook. Let me close this. Okay. All right. So here's the, the problem. And there's a couple things that I want to uh, illustrate. Um, first off, I, I'm actually going to put, uh, I'm going to put two things here at the top of the page before we start doing some, uh, some work, before we start doing some problems. Um, the first thing that I want to put uh, here is I want to recall th this formula here. And, and I sort of wrote this at the beginning. Uh, and there's a reason why. Um, so if you recall, one of the things I mentioned really early on in the semester, and we actually haven't really used it up until this point, is the concept of a KIP. Okay? And this is a very common unit uh, in civil engineering applications. Uh, I mean, and it's, it, I say civil engineering, but it's really uh, it's very common for anybody operating in U.S. units. Um, one KIP is equal to 1,000 pounds. Um, in fact, the term KIP is just a, a shorthand for kilo pound. So that's why we call it KIP. Um, the point I'm making with this is that this problem, we, if you look at the numbers, like we have some distances that are like 200 feet, 300 feet, 110 feet. And if we multiply that by like 5,000 pounds, because remember each tugboat uh, can withstand uh, or can uh, put out uh, 5,000 pounds, the moments in the numbers are going to get really, really big. Uh, and so I'm going to uh, idealize these, um, these tugboat forces. So I'll call it you know, the magnitude of each uh, uh, tugboat. So when I say the, the magnitude of the force vector, I mean, you know, for each of these four tugboats, we're going to say uh, instead of 5,000 pounds, it's going to be five kips, okay? And so that's just going to make our numbers a bit more smaller and a bit manage more manageable. Maybe I should say, instead of, you know, calling it some force vector, maybe I should say uh, magnitude of tugboat force. And so maybe, maybe I should do that just so, you know, we're all speaking uh, in the same terms. So instead of 5,000 pounds, I'm going to call it five kips. Okay. And so that's the first thing I want to recall. The second thing I want to recall is uh, moments in two dimensions. And if you remember, we, we had done uh, two-dimensional moment problems before, and we said that an easy way of computing the magnitude of a moment in two dimensions was to do uh, the cross product. But remember, the cross product in two dimensions sort of resolves to a single term. And it's just uh, the K back, uh, because if you have moment, uh, if you have forces in the X, Y plane, then your moment's just going to be about the Z axis. So it's just a, a term times K. And the magnitude of that, uh, that uh, 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 vector is RX FY minus RY FX. Um, and so we don't necessarily need that. Like we don't have to remember that for this problem, but it's going to make our life uh, a little easier uh, when we handle this. Okay. Everybody good? Okay. Now, um, in order to uh, to handle this equivalent system of forces, there's a series of steps that we need to uh, engage in. 
Uh, and so I'm going to walk through this step by step, and I think you're going to find that this is uh, uh, pretty straightforward. So step one, um, and, and I don't want to say that there's a desperate order that you have to follow. Like you could probably do step two first, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, but we'll, we'll just do it in an order that I think makes the most sense. Step one is to write each individual force in I, J, you know, maybe I should put uh, and or K notation. And what I mean by that is we, I mean, we're in two dimensions, so we really don't need to um, uh, uh, deal with K, or maybe I should put uh, and maybe K notation if you're dealing in three dimensions. <clears throat> now, the, re the reason why I'm saying this is because if we write the, the, the forces in I, J, or K notation, what we're doing is we're splitting it up into its X, Y, and Z components. And so what we're ultimately going to do is sum up all the forces in the X direction, all the forces in the Y direction, and maybe all the forces in the Z direction. And so it's going to make our resultant computation uh, a lot easier. So let's take each force one at a time and let's see if we can uh, we can handle this. Okay, so force one. Okay, now force one, we're talking about this one right here. Okay, now I want to see if somebody can help me out with this in the chat. Okay, so the magnitude of the vector is going to be um, five kips, and so it's going to be five multiplied by the XY components. So somebody help me out. If you had to write this vector in I, you know, J notation. How would you do that? What would be this force number one in I, J notation? Somebody help me out with that. Okay, so we have five cosine 60 degrees I and five cosine 60 degrees J. That's correct, but there's one thing missing. And the thing that's missing are your positives and negatives. So help me out. What's Well, which, one, which one's going to be negative and which one's going to be positive? So is the X component going to be positive or negative and the Y component positive or negative? Think about it like that. There you go. Mr. Davis is, is, is correct because we're going to have um, five cosine 60 I, but this is negative five sine 60 J because here's the vector. Then we're talking about this tugboat right here. And so, you know, we're going to into an X component and a Y component. F sub y. So F sub x is pointing to the right, so it's positive, but F sub y is pointing down, so that's negative. Does that make sense? I think somebody had a negative cosine in the chat, but does that make sense? The x component's going right, but the y component's going down. Okay, good deal. So, so what I'm, uh, so if I, um, expand on that a bit. So if I, I'll, I'll work out this one and then I'm going to ask you all to do the next ones. Okay, so if I expand on this a bit, we're going to have 2.5 times I, because cosine of 60 is a half, minus, and then the sine of 60 degrees times 5, and then it's negative, ends up being something like 4.330J. Okay, and so this is F1, and remember that's in kips. Okay, so that's going to be our F1. Okay, now let's let's keep on trucking and let's see if we can do each one of these. Okay, so let's do F2. Okay, so let's reason through a couple things before we try and, and chug this out. Let's start off with the components. Okay, so we've got this times I plus this times j. Let's start off with the, the, the positives and negatives. The x component, uh, is the x component going to be positive or is the x component going to be negative? And then the same question with the y component. 
So somebody help me out with just just the the positives or negatives in the chat. Like which one is it? Is are they both going to be negative? Is one going to be negative? One going to be positive? Somebody help me out. There we go. Exactly right. So this is positive and this is negative. Exactly right. Okay. Now, I want to show you something with this, this computation, and I'm going to use another color here, um, because I want, I want this to make, make sense. So, so, yeah, the negative Y and the positive X. I, I, I want to show you something here with this, uh, with this expression, and, I'll, and I want to focus on this triangle. Okay? Now, I propose that ultimately we're going to have 5 cosine theta and 5 sine theta. Same thing that we did on the previous problem, but I want to show you a way that you can reduce the amount of calculations that you have to do. All right, let's check check this out. Here's this triangle here. And this is 3 and this is 4. We had a problem that was kind of like this on the exam. Uh, what we're talking about, what this 3 and 4, we call this a slope ratio, Okay. Now, let's just make sure everybody's paying attention. If this is 3 and this is 4, what's the hypotenuse? Five. There we go. There we go. We got people we got people rocking and rolling on this one. Okay, now here here's the thing. Now, you could handle this one of two ways. Okay, this is the angle that we're talking about. This is theta. Now, one way of handling this is saying that the tangent of theta is 4 over 3, so theta is inverse tangent of 4 over 3. And then once you get a theta, take a sine and cosine of that. And if you want to do that, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But here's the thing. I propose that that's way too much work. Don't do that. Okay. Instead, just go off of, just go off of Sakatoa. Okay. Let me ask you a question. What is the cosine of this angle? Let's just do cosine. What is the cosine of that angle? It's adjacent over hypotenuse. Instead of writing cosine of theta, just write three-fifths. And instead of sine of theta, write four-fifths. And how am I getting that? What is cosine? Adjacent over hypotenuse. What is sine? Opposite over hypotenuse. So instead of trying to, uh, uh, you know, you, all you're doing is you're adding up the amount of work that you have to do. Whereas if you just use Sakatoa, the answer is right there. Okay. So I propose that instead of, you know, breaking out the inverse trig functions, just use your slope ratios. And so this is going to be. 3i minus 4j. And again, that's in kips. Okay, are there any questions about that? Does that, like how I just sort of looked at it and said, oh, it's just three fifths and four fifths. Is, that, is everybody okay with that? For you civil engineers, when you take me for structural analysis, I can't tell you how many times that we're going to sort of avoid doing the trig functions. I'm just going to be doing this three-fifths and this four-fifths stuff all the time in there because it's so much easier than, than trying to deal with the trig. Um, so much easier. All right. Okay, F3. Somebody help me out. What is the vector for F3? So we're talking about this vector right here. How am I going to write that in vector notation? Negative 5J. There you go. Exactly right. Negative 5J. Okay. And that's it because it's just vertical and it's going down. So that's in kips. Okay. Now, lastly, I want to talk about uh, force number four. So force number four, our angle is 45 degrees. Uh, and what can you tell me about the X and Y components just based on the way that boat number four is pointing? They're equal, they're the same, and they're both positive. That's exactly right. And they're the same, they're the same magnitude 
just because the angle happens to be 45 degrees, not uh, not because it's pointing up and to the right. So F4 is 5 cosine 45 degrees I uh, plus 5 cosine, or sorry, sine, although that doesn't matter because they're the same. 45 degrees J. No, I, maybe it's the, the text. I don't know. But yeah, that's, that's supposed to be 45. And, and admittedly, that might be a little bit on me because I zoomed in a bit when I took the image. But yeah, that's supposed to be 45 degrees. That, that one's probably more on me. So uh, I can go ahead and I'll go ahead and do this one for you real quick. And then the rest of them, I'm going to ask for, uh, for your help. Okay, so uh, five times the cosine of 45 and five times the sine of 45, it ends up being the same value. It's like 3.536 uh, plus 3.536J in kips. Okay, so before I move on, everybody good? Any questions? Okay. Now I don't want to keep scrolling too much, so this next part I want to have a. I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to put another image of the um, the boat here. All right. Uh, I want to pull something up real quick. I'm going to, instead of stopping the share and restarting the share, I'm just going to uh, open the uh, open the notes all over again. Okay. All right. So here's the the problem. And what we're doing is we're determining the equivalent force couple system at point O. OK, and so what that means is this, um, whenever you're determining an idealized system or an equivalent system, you have to maintain not only your force equilibrium, but you have to maintain. Or, OK, I got to stop using the word equilibrium. You have to maintain an equivalent system of not just forces, but an equivalent system of moments. And what, what that means is in order for your systems to be equivalent, they all have to be with respect to a common point. Now, on this problem, what we're talking about is this point right here, this O, okay? And so we're talking about that point right there, okay? And so where that point comes into relevance is not with the forces, but with the moments. We're going to ensure that our equivalent system generates the same moment about this point O. And so what that means is that my second step is to determine position vectors from the point in question to each force. Okay. And so what I'm doing here is here's my, uh, let's take force one. Okay. So I need to determine a position vector for that, uh, for that force. And so what I'm trying to find is this vector right there. And so we'll call that R1. And so I'm going to do R1, and then the rest of you are going to do, you're going to help me out with the others. And so I need to determine a vector from point zero, from point O, to that first force. And so since I kind of wrote over the, uh, the, the dimensions there a bit, I'm going to erase that. And so it's going to be some quantity times X plus some quantity times or some quantity in the x direction times i plus some quantity in the y direction times j. 
let's take the x direction. So if I'm at zero, or if I'm at point O, to get to boat number one, I have to go left and I have to go up. So it's going to be a negative quantity here and a positive quantity there. And what are the values? Well, from O to one, left to right, that's 90. And from uh, top or from vertically, that's 50. And so I'm using that dimension and that dimension. And so I propose then that R1 is negative 90i plus 50j, and that's in feet. Okay, does that make sense? Hopefully I'm not going too fast. I've got to believe by now that like position vectors and writing force vectors that at this point that should be kind of like old hat at this point. Well, help, help me out with this. If you're okay with that, somebody in chat tell me, what's R2? How do I define that vector right there? Well, it's 70J, but what's the X component? Because we're going, because here's the thing, we're going 100 in the X and 100I and, and 70J. Yeah, so it's going to be 100I plus 70j, right? Because we're going, you know, over and up. So that's my position vector right there. It's exactly right. All right. Somebody help me out then with R3. This will tell you whether, whether folks are, are paying attention on this. What's R3? So we're going to go, again, from point O, there you go, 400I and 70J. That's exactly right. So 400I plus 70J. And then um, while we're at it, let's do R4. So what's R4 going to be? Three hundred I and negative seventy J. That's correct. This is great. And again, all these are in feet. Every one of them. This is great stuff. Okay. All right. Any questions? Okay, all right, so we've determined the force vector for each force, and we've determined the position vector for each force, all measured from a common point, all measured from this point O. And so now we can start rocking and rolling. And so what I'll say is for step three, you can say evaluate R cross F, for each force and then sum all forces and moments. Okay, I'm going to need a little bit of room for this. I'm going to scroll down a bit. I like to do this in a table because it's a lot easier to, uh, to keep track of. Okay, so there's four boats, okay, and so maybe what I'll do is I'll just draw myself out a big table. And so we'll say boat one, two, three, four. And we'll draw myself out a little table. And so uh, first thing I'll do is I will say... Uh, 
let's write out my position vectors. And remember, these are uh, measured in feet. Okay. And so what did we do? We did uh, minus 90i plus 50j. We had 100i plus 70j. We had 400i plus 70j. And then we had 300i, but then minus 70j. And so one of the things about these problems, but I'd argue that this is the case about just statics in general, is that your bookkeeping and your organization is probably just as important and sometimes maybe even more important uh, than each individual calculation. Because if you lose track of a positive or negative, it can throw everything off. Okay, so now we've got our position vectors and now let's write out our force vectors. And these are measured uh, in kips. And so what did we have here? We had uh, 2.5i and then it was minus 4.330j. Then we had 3i, what was it? Minus 4j. This one was just minus 5j. And then this was um, 3. 536i uh, plus 3.536j. Now, okay. Ultimately, what we need to do is R cross F for each one of these. And so we're going to have to do them one at a time, okay? And this is measured in foot kips, right? Because this is a moment, right? So how do we want to handle this? Let me go back to my red pen. Remember, in 2D, R cross F is rx fy minus ry fx times the k vector right because there's only a k vector left over uh in in two dimensions and so maybe what i'll do is i will just so that's a bit cleaner um move that down a little bit I think that's going to be good right there. Okay. All right. That'll be fine. Okay. So let's, um, let's take each of these one at a time. Uh, can somebody tell me what um, this first one is? So we'll call it M1. It's going to be a vector and it's going to be R1 cross F1. So I want to engage in and help and chat helping me out with this a bit. So if I do, uh, uh, this first row crossed with this, uh, this, fir this first R crossed with this first F. So I'm going to do Rx times Fy minus Ry times Fx. It's going to be a certain quantity times K. Somebody help me out and tell me what, uh, what that comes out to be. I'm going to, I'm going to have you do this one for me. And so maybe, you know, we can sort of write it out a bit down here. So it's going to be Rx Fy minus Ry Fx times K. Oh, there we go. And that's positive 264.7. And I got a second on that. That's exactly right. Good deal. I like it. All right. So if that's the case, somebody else tell me what M2 is. Let's do it M2. And then we've got M3, M4. 
I'm going to lower that a little bit. All right, so M2, is that M2? Now check your signs on that, okay? Because it's gonna be R cross uh, this, so it's gonna be that times that minus this times this. So check your signs on that. Yeah, I'm, get, I'm getting negative 610, so. Yeah, just make sure you watch out your signs on that. It's easy to get those uh, uh, backwards on this. What about M3? That's what I got. And then uh, M4. Thirteen oh eight point uh point I got I got point one but um it, I don't think it really matters all that much the the I, I'll be honest I'm really not super concerned with the uh, rounding with this because I mean if you're tracking all your data in your calculator you'd have gotten it uh, correct I'm not really all that concerned about that. Okay, uh, now what I want you to do, now what I want you to do is this. We're gonna put a little row here on the bottom of this, uh, this table. And we're gonna put a summation here, okay? Now, here, here's the thing, we're gonna sum uh, some of these columns. We're not gonna sum this column here because I don't really care what the sum of the position vectors are. That doesn't really tell me anything. What I do care about is the sum of the force vectors and the sum of the moment vectors. So somebody help me out with the moments first. If I sum up all of these moment vectors, what am I going to get? I got a 264, a negative 610, um, a negative 2000. All this. If I sum up all of these, what am I going to get? Negative 1037.2 K. That's, that's what I'm getting. Check your signs because the, the M2 and the M3 are negative. The M1 and the M4 are positive. I got, I got negative 1037. Now, while we're at it, somebody sum these up. I want to see if you can do that one. So in order to sum these up, we're going to add up all the components with I and add up all the components with J. So there's going to be something times I plus something times J. Let's do this one. And while we're doing that, Ms. Uh, Mr. Brown, did you see the, the, the negative uh, 1037.2? Were you able to get that? Okay, 904i. Okay, that's, that's no big deal. 904 and then 9.7 minus 9.79. Uh, did anybody else get that? Okay, good deal. Okay. I propose that that is the same definition as it always was. That's the resultant. So 9.04i 
minus 9.79 J. So what does all this mean? Like, like, okay, Dr. Mike, I see what you're doing. You're writing some vectors, you're doing some cross products, you're summing them up. Like, what does this mean? Okay, here's what I propose this means. Okay, and forgive my artwork. I'm gonna do the best I can. So, uh, let's see. Here's my boat. There's my boat. Okay, and this right here, we're gonna call this. Uh, how, how do I want to do this? We'll call this right here. We'll call this point O, okay? And so that's just uh, that image just drawn a, a lot more horribly because I'm not the, the best artist. Okay. And so I propose, remember that boat or that, that ship had like a force here, a force there, a force there, a force there. I propose you can get rid of all those forces and you can replace it with just two. This right here and this right here. So what, what are those? Well, let's talk about the resultant. The resultant, it goes, it's 904, 9.04i minus 9.79j. So that's going to be sort of like pointing towards quadrant four. So it's going to go like that. So that's my resultant vec my resultant vector i that's i and then what about my own vector okay let's talk about pop quiz that's a negative moment is that clockwise or counterclockwise clockwise so i can replace that with a single vector if that magnitude pointing in that direction and then a single moment of minus 1037.2 K. And so if you want an answer that's an answer right there. In other words, I can take this boat system with all these different forces that you see here on the top right and replace it with that. Just a single force and a single moment. And that is statically equivalent. Box this so that we have that separated. Now, before I move on to the next part, are there any questions about this? Does this make sense? Okay, now let's go back to the problem here. So here's the problem, and let's just sort of recap what, what uh, the problem's asking for. So uh, first off, we have four tugboats that are each exerting a force. Determine the equivalent force couple system, this part right here. That's what we just did. Uh, this determine the equivalent force system of the, uh, uh, the, the determine the equivalent force couple system. That is this part right here, just turning the boat turning all those forces into a single resultant and a single, and a single moment. Now, there's a different part. Where should a single, more powerful tugboat push uh, the cruise ship to produce the same effect as the original four tugboats? So um, I'm going to guide you through this problem a little bit, uh, but I think you'll see uh, what we're talking about here. Oh, goodness. So first off, um, let me... Let me draw a line here. Let me get my. This is requires some more horrible artwork. Okay, that's about the best boat you're going to get out of me. 
Okay, so this is point uh, O. Now, if I remember correctly, uh, this dimension on the boat right here, this dimension, this dimension, this dimension, and this dimension, this was 70 feet for, um, for either side, okay? So here, here's the boat, and so maybe I'll, I'll sort of draw that like that. So the boat is supposed to be symmetric like that, but Dr. Mike is a, is a horrible artist, and that's the best uh, boat you're going to get out of me. Dr. Waite would be embarrassed if he saw that boat. Um, <laughs> now, uh, we have a single more, so the question asks, uh, where should a single more powerful tugboat push in order to generate the same, the same effect? And so what does it mean by a single more powerful tugboat? Well, the single more powerful tugboat is the resultant is this 9.04i minus 9.79j because that is going to have a bigger mag first off i mean it makes it, it defines you know uh, uh the the conditions of the problem it is more powerful than each tugboat remember each tugboat can only withstand five kips but on top of that um you know it maintains the same sum of forces i mean what is that resultant that resultant is the sum of forces in the x direction and the sum of forces in the y direction for all four of the boats and so that's going to be my single more equivalent uh boat as for where the boat's going to push well let's go back to you know the very beginning of the problem uh see how the boats are either pushing on the top of the cruise ship or on the bottom of the cruise ship well Given the, the direction in which the resultant goes, you know, this pointing down like this, I propose that that single more powerful tugboat has got to push somewhere like right here. Okay, and so this is my resultant vector. So 9.04i minus 9.79j. Okay, and so that's my, that's my uh, uh, force vector. The question is, where the heck is it? Like, where the heck does it push on the uh, uh, on the boat? Well, this is this is point zero. So, really, what we've got to figure out is what is that position vector? Now, what is that position vector? Well. It's whatever this dimension is, which I have no idea. So maybe we'll call that X. So I don't know what that is. So maybe it's X times I. But we do know this dimension. That's the 70 feet plus 70 J. Okay. So we know we know the position vector. Here's the force vector. Well, what's the cross product of that? What's the cross product of, uh, of R cross F there? Actually, let me put my marker back. Oh, what happened there? What's my, what's my cross product of these? What's R cross F? Well, what's it gonna be? It's gonna be RX times FY minus RY times fx. And now, what does that get me? Well, that gets me the moment generated by this boat. But what must that moment equal? That moment has to equal 1037.2. So minus 9.79x minus whatever 70 times 9.04 is. What, 632.8? I don't know about you, but that looks like a pretty easy equation to solve for x. If you solve for x, what do you get? I mean, what do we do? We add the 632.8 on either side, divide by the negative 9.79. What do you get for X?
41.31, and that's a distance, so it's going to be 41.31 uh, feet. So I propose that if you take that single resultant boat and you put it on the top of the ship and you stick it 41.31 feet away from that origin, away from that point O, that will generate the same force and the same moment at point O as all those forces. So if you want, you can kind of think of it as we're going from like a system one to a system two to maybe a system three. So, you know, system one being the boat with all these different forces on it, like you see here in the top right. Uh, and then system two is, let's just take that and represent it with just a single force and a single moment. And then system three is, let's get rid of the moment and just represent it with a single force. But how do I represent it? Well, I have to put that force at the special place such that it generates the same amount of moment. And so all I'm doing is just solving for X. What is that X value uh, in order to do that? All right. Does that make sense? Are there any questions on that? While you all are doing that or, or you know, checking or thinking of some questions, I'm pulling up the homework to see if there's any particular points I need to raise about the homework. Um, actually, let me pull up the homework real quick. I know we're, we're running short of time, and I apologize for running over a bit, but I do want to pull something up. So this is your, your homework assignment, and what I decided to do was give you a couple of hints. So on the first problem, uh, you're going to be, it, it's, it's pretty basic. You're going to be uh, trying to, you know, determine, it, it's basically what we did here, it's just a lot less parameters. Um, when you're taking the moments about point A, there's some forces and some moments. Don't multiply the 400 Newton moment by a, arm, by a distance, just add this to the, the moment generated, and, and, and uh, it's a pretty uh, straightforward problem. Uh, for simplicity on problem 3.113, take the moments about point A on the truss, and then if you, uh, I have a hint, uh, along the line AG, only the Y component uh, of the result that will generate moment. Um, and so that that's really all I have for today. I want everybody to sort of chug on that a bit. If anybody has any questions, of course, you can uh, post them in the Teams. You can send me a message, uh, and, I'll, and I'll be more than happy to address it. My apologies for going over a couple minutes, but I thought this was a really worthwhile exercise. What we're going to do on Wednesday is we're going to do a couple examples in 3D. Um, not harder, just maybe a bit longer. Uh, and I might simplify some of the calculations or, or do some of the calculations for you just so we're not wasting time doing, you know, plug and chug all over and over again. Uh, that's all I have, everybody. I will see you all on Wednesday. Y'all, everybody uh, stay safe and stay healthy.